I wouldn't dare try, even try to get into Scott Peterson's head. But I think he's probably got to be disappointed. I think that's how he feels tonight. Because this could have been the best day he's had since that California jury found him guilty, and that's almost 20 years ago. Guilty of murdering his wife, Lacey, and their unborn son, Connor. This was the day that his new team of lawyers, again, from the L.A. Innocence Project, so, you know, kind of a big deal. It's the day that they marched into court and they asked the judge to order DNA tests on a range of evidence that was either overlooked or disregarded or never before even tested. Let me give you the list. It includes 11 different items found near Lacey and Connor's bodies in the San Francisco Bay. Also, two items from a burglary that happened across the street from the Peterson's home right around the same time as the murder. And four items from an orange van that was parked, was torched and then parked <laughs> around the same time, parked less than a mile from the couple's home. Inside that van, blood-stained mattress. The prosecutors pushed back on all of these requests, of course. And they cited that the other evidence that convicted Peterson, uh, and there was a lot, uh, was plenty. And also that, you know, the new DNA tests, they say, are just unnecessary. That's what the prosecutor said. And then the judge, what the judge do? The judge agreed to order new tests, but only on one piece of evidence. The defense had theorized that burglars, not Scott Peterson, had abducted and murdered Lacey and her unborn son. But the judge said that nothing connected the burglary or the burned out van uh, to being retested. And that judge is only allowing Peterson's team to retest the duct tape that was found on Lacey's pants. And let me just describe that. The pants that were on Lacey's remains after months underwater, after they surfaced and washed up on the shore. That duct tape. I should tell you it was already tested, but it was tested 20 years ago, back in 2004. And it was found to have traces of DNA, but back then we weren't so good at this game. So it wasn't enough DNA to determine an actual profile. The judge says with the new DNA testing methods, okay, all right, well, now you're talking. Maybe you will get a hit. News Nation senior national correspondent Brian Enton was in that courtroom today. He joins me live now with all the details. I, I have to be honest, I really surprised. I really am surprised that the mattress um, is not going to be tested. I sort of thought that was the strongest evidence from, you know, the outsider's point of view. But this is really, I guess, a, a partial win. But there's a heck of a lot riding on this little piece of tape, isn't there? Yeah, this is a small victory, but a victory nonetheless. It was interesting being in court, uh, Ashley, because as the judge went down the list of all the items and whether or not they would be retested, it was no, 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 over and over again. And you could see Scott Peterson just sort of sitting there uh, looking straight ahead, emotionless. And then at the very end, she said yes. She said yes to that piece of duct tape. Uh, the piece of duct tape that was with uh, Lacey's remains when, uh, when the pants washed ashore in 2004. And she said she believed that technology has come a long way since 2004, and there, there was biological evidence on that piece of duct tape back then, and she thought there was enough there uh, to uh, substantiate retesting it uh, today at a new laboratory. So that was the one victory uh, for Scott Peterson. Then they went back and forth. They argued about which lab they were going to use. The, the uh, Innocence Project wants to use the lab they have a relationship with. The prosecution wasn't happy about that. Uh, so, so that fight continues, but they did get that one victory, Ashley. So you never quite understand that because the Innocence Project is not about getting guilty people free. It's not. They, they literally vet every case. There are so many cases that want the Innocence Project to take on their, their mission. And the Innocence Project only takes cases they truly believe uh, has somebody wrongly locked up. So I'm surprised there's even a fight over the lab. But, but OK. So then what about a timeline? Not suggesting in court today they would have even talked about it. But are we going to get that test soon? Is there you know, another six months till we get another hearing? Or well, what's the timeline? Well, and back to the Innocence Project, the interesting thing about this is this is not like the national 
uh, Innocence Project that we've all heard of. It's it's like a small chapter of it in L.A. with six or seven lawyers, uh, and and that uh, that's been that's been made clear because what you just said, a lot of people have been thinking. Wait a minute, I thought the Innocence Project just on people just took on cases where the people really really might uh, be innocent. It's a little bit different in terms of a timeline. Uh, they are going to meet again in July. Uh, they were calling lab. They actually took a break today so that they could um, the the lawyers could call labs and try to figure out timing and and sort of next steps. Uh, and they're going to meet again in in July and sort of go from there. Okay, let's talk about that bloody mattress because honestly, that's the one thing that I've sort of hung all my fascination on. Right, that there's a bloody mattress in a van that's burned out and discovered not far from you know Lacey's home, right around the same time as as the 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 disappearance of Lacey, and there's like people who've talked about seeing a van that's sort of cream colored or orange colored. I'm I'm so surprised. Any idea why the judge said it's just not connected and therefore no? Yeah, so I, well, she didn't say that. I was interested in the bloody mattress and also the hammer, you know, the hammer that was found in the house nearby that was burglarized. And what she said was that they don't have either of those pieces of evidence anymore. They're not in police custody, they weren't kept. So they can't uh, be tested, which I thought was kind of interesting. They also made mention that uh, the blood on the mattress was tested before it came back and linked to a male's DNA. But when they retested it, it was inconclusive, which is one reason uh, that the defense wanted to test it again. But that's apparently just not a possibility now uh, because they don't know where the mattress is and they don't know where the hammer is. Uh, that's nuts. I mean, we've been making so much hay of this damn mattress, and, and now you're saying it doesn't exist anymore. But does it do any samples or cuttings or anything that typically they they will keep some piece of evidence, you know, the clippings, that none of that, everything's gone? Yeah, and I was also surprised that it got this far, that the defense made such a big deal of this mattress, that it was in so many of the filings, and that it didn't come out until just today uh, that they don't have it, that it's no longer in police custody. So the judge said that wasn't an option. Some of the other pieces of evidence, though, she said just weren't relevant. There were other things that washed ashore, a tarp. Uh, there was a piece of twine. There was other pieces of duct tape. Uh, and the judge said, look, you know, we don't need to test everything here. This isn't like a wild goose chase. Uh, that stuff just isn't relevant, so that won't be tested. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.